Okay, how's it going, everybody? I hope you're all doing well. Okay, so in this episode, I thought I'd try to say something about the uh, about the incredible novella written by Franz Kafka, The Metamorphosis. First published in um, 1915, and almost certainly his best-known work. And if you don't know, The Metamorphosis tells the story of a young salesman, Gregor Samsa, who, in one of the most famous opening sentences in all of literature, wakes up one morning to find himself inexplicably transformed into a huge insect. Thereafter, Gregor becomes an object of, uh, of disgrace to his family and an isolated man. Okay, so uh, let's just uh, jump right into it. So what I want to do is I want to explore one of the major themes of the novella, which uh, suffice it to say, waking up as an insect seems to strongly hint at, namely, alienation. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on this first particular interpretation I'm going to mention here because I think it's been discussed uh, quite a bit in various ways. But it is important, so I'll just say it quickly and um, dogmatically. Okay, so I think that one reason that Kafka has Gregor transform into an insect is to suggest that Gregor is, is alienated from himself. In other words, what's partly going on is that Gregor desperately wants to be authentically himself, but the thing is, is that he can't break free from the expectations of those around him, in particular, the expectations of his own family. Now, what's the result of this? Well, a kind of paralysis. This is partly what the insect seems to represent, a paralysis. I mean, as an insect, Gregor can't get out of bed, and so he can't choose and he can't act. And really, what's going on is that he doesn't really want to. What he's doing then is he's ultimately denying the responsibility of making a choice. And this is what becoming the insect does. It alleviates any responsibility on his part. You might say that uh, becoming this insect allows for him to make an uncomfortable but necessary change in his relations within his family, but at the expense of being himself about it. Now, if we accept this sort of interpretation, then Gregor is, um, is complicit in his own alienation. Okay, now I realize that there's a lot more to be said there, but I want to move on to... Um, Something else, I want to spend more time on what I think is another form of alienation being hinted at by Kafka, one that has been mentioned by a few commentators. So this is not so much uh, Gregor's alienation from himself as it is his alienation from others. And in particular, it's an alienation from others that I would say is caused in part by, well, by money. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, let's remember that money is clearly one of the central concerns of the uh, Samsa family. Remember that Gregor works as some sort of salesman to provide support for his family because, because they're in debt. The others in the family don't seem to work. So here then we see that Gregor's interrelations with his family are mediated by the expectation of money. And because of this, Gregor seems to be regarded by his family almost only from the standpoint of his, uh, of his use value as a moneymaker. So we might say then that the bonds that connect Gregor to the rest of his family are largely economic and not those of real love. And of course, the real evidence for this comes when he turns into that insect. What happens is that now he's seen by them 
and this is incredible when you think about it, but now he's seen by them as some sort of liability that they have to endure rather than as a struggling family member who desperately needs their love and support. In other words, their financial situation is more important to them than is any genuine connection with their son and their brother. Now, is any of this a surprise? I mean, when relationships are mediated by money like this, there is, of course, little genuine human connection. There's no real meeting of, of souls. Actually, now that I think about it, you know, Karl Marx famously talked about this. What he basically said is that when money gets in the way, we become less and less capable of seeing others or even things for what they really are, for their intrinsic qualities. And then people become dehumanized. They become things. They become means to ends. Actually, we, we even eventually see this attitude in Gregor's sister, who seems to uh, become so indifferent to her own brother as an insect that she eventually shifts her use of pronouns and calls him an it. Again, this uh, wouldn't be surprising for Marx because for him, the introduction of money transforms and degrades human relationships. For him, human beings should be loved because, because they're family or because they're, they're, they're lovable. Yet in a capitalistic society, they're loved because well, because they have lots of money, or they're hated or neglected because they're poor. What's more, I think you could argue that in our society, we often tend to admire those who are wealthy, irregardless of how it is they became wealthy. Not because of their intrinsically valuable features, in other words. So what do we do? We, we Google net worth, not moral character. And not only this, but, but money, Marx noticed, turns everything into a commodity. Everything has a price, including other human beings. I mean, think about it. Things that were, were once done out of a natural or intuitive sense that this is what people ought to do for each other, like, I don't know, uh, raise their own children or, or help their aging mothers or fathers, we now, without batting an eye, pay others to do those things for us. I mean, when it comes to people paying each other to do things that were once done without thought of payment, the examples are endless, are they not? Actually, you know, now that I think about it, Shakespeare has an apt quote here. And in fact, Marx might have been influenced by it. What Shakespeare said in uh, Timon of Athens is this. He said, gold, yellow, glittering, precious gold, thus much of this will make black, white, foul, fair, wrong, right. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, it seems to suggest that money, gold in fact, has taken up a revered place in our world. It's become a divine thing that we now bow down to, and which uh, has power over all of us. And not only that, but in our chasing after it, it inverts our values. It flips them upside down. It makes white black and black white. And it relegates both our genuine individual and societal needs to the common denominator of its naked acquisition. Anyway, Actually, you know what, since I was uh, speaking about Marx, I actually think he's, he's relevant here for the metamorphosis in another way as well. So, how so? Well, I mean, it's pretty clear that Gregor has opted for a job not out of passion or because he's uh, intrinsically interested in it, but because he feels obligated to work in order to help his family. So, what he has to do is he has to provide for his family in a job that completely 
separates him from who he really is. Remember, he's a, a traveling salesman. His job is marked by a bureaucracy, and in it there seems to be a complete lack of creativity and meaningful human connections. So Gregor is essentially, you could say, a, a cog inside a machine. This is why he's seen by his employer, the, the chief clerk, as completely expendable. Everything is about his productivity or his lack of it, and nothing has anything to do with him as a person. And so, if he doesn't maximize profit, he's gone. And so the upshot of all of this is that Gregor basically spends his day in a, um, in a dehumanizing atmosphere. It's soul crushing for him. So like I said, Gregor works tirelessly in a job that completely separates him from his true nature. Well, this sort of separation is what Marx warned about. This is what, for him, constitutes a kind of a alienation of labor. This is basically when our work becomes completely external to us, and when what we do has nothing to do with our essential being. It's when, as Mark says, we feel at home when we are not working, and not at home when we are. Well, the consequence of, of this kind of life is for Marx, both physically and psychologically devastating. And so I think it's reasonable to also see Gregor's metamorphosis partly as the embodiment of just this sort of devastation. Bye for now.